and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be answering the question today, how can we get the gases we need into our body and how can we get the gases we don't need out of our body? Welcome to What's Your Question? Let's go. My objectives for you today, and there's three of them, are to name the parts of the respiratory system, to describe how we breathe in and breathe out, and the best way to measure lung volume. Finally, we're going to explain how the lungs are adapted to gas exchange, what they can do to make them as good at this as possible. This is a diagram of the respiratory system. There are many parts to it that you need to know about. Uh, if you're doing your GCSEs, there's a couple here you don't need to know, but I want to throw them in anyway because it's interesting to know the parts of these. Um, so I want you to pause the video here and see if you can work out what any of these labels should be. And if you do know them, you can write them down or you can throw them in the comments and we'll go through the answers in a few seconds time. Pause the video here. Okay, so you should have now got an idea of what each of those different labels is going to be. We're going to start at the top right and work our way around clockwise of those labels. So at the top right then, uh, the label's pointing to the, just at the back of the um, back of the mouth, um, so where the nose cavity will meet, meet the, the, the cavity at the back of the mouth, where those two join together, and that area is called the pharynx, P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. As you move down then, it shows you next the tube that travels down, um, down through the neck and connects your mouth to your lungs, which we call the trachea. Uh, at the bottom of the trachea, it branches off to form two bronchus. Uh, and if you remember, it's not labelled on here, but the bronchus will also separate out into much smaller, thinner tubes called the bronchioles. It's then under that, the label is the left lung. And at the bottom of that, we can see the large red muscle, which we call the diaphragm. Starting on the left-hand side and beginning our way up then, we have the right lung. Remember, when we're talking about things inside our body, we imagine that we are lying down on the paper and we're talking about ourselves. So in this case, my right lung will be this is right lung as well. Uh, so when you're looking at it, it'll be the other way around. Whereas when you're talking about it, the right hand, your left of this, we call the right. It's all swapped round when it comes to talk about those things. Uh, above that, we have the right main bronchus. Above that, we have your voice box or your larynx. We then have your mouth, which can be called the oral cavity. We have the nostrils and we have the nasal cavity as well. Uh, if you got all those, well done. Um, if you did, throw a comment down in the comments. Uh, and I'll like it if you did well. When it comes to getting the gases we need into our body and the gases we need don't need out of our body, the most important part of this is breathing. Before we move on to exactly what this is, let's just be clear about what we mean by breathing. Breathing is just the movement of you bringing in these gases and you pushing them out of your body. It's nothing to do with respiration at all. That's a process that happens in every cell of your bodies and um, releases energy uh, in a reaction. It is not this process we're going to talk about next. This is just breathing. Okay. When it comes to breathing, we need to know some specific key words. We need to know that we have the chest, inside there is the lungs, uh, and the ribs are covering our lungs. And between each rib, we have the intercostal muscles. They're really important as they will allow our ribs to move so we can breathe. And at the bottom of our rib cage, we also have the diaphragm. Okay. Now, when we breathe in, you should be able to notice something happening to your chest. You notice that your chest moves upwards and outwards. It gets bigger. And when we breathe out, the opposite's going to happen. It's moving downwards and inwards, okay? When we're talking about this movement, those are the key terms you need to be able to use. On a breathe in, our chest moves up and out, and it's able to do this because of the intercostal muscles. Uh, and when we breathe out again, the opposite's going to happen. For the diaphragm, when we breathe in, the diaphragm's expanding to make that area, our chest cavity, much bigger. So it moves down when we breathe in and moves up when we breathe out as well. This GIF I've placed here, you can see is showing you this in action. You can see inhale when we breathe in, we can see the diaphragm move down and the chest get bigger. And when we exhale, we see the diaphragm move up and we see the chest get much smaller. The lungs are not forcing this to happen. The reason the lungs change in size is because our muscles are changing the area of our chest cavity. That is the reason why you breathe in. The lungs don't push these out, our chest pulls out, and that sucks air in to fill the gap that's made. 
and when we push air out like a bagpipe, our chest and our diaphragm are squashing the lungs to force that air out again. So, just to clarify then, those key words is when we breathe in, the chest is going to move up and out and the diaphragm moves down. And when we breathe out again, the diaphragm is going to move up and the chest is going to move down and inwards. So we're expanding on breathing on an inhale and we're um, contracting on exhale. Instead of saying breathing in and breathing out where possible, you should also try and use the words inhale to breathe in and exhale to breathe out in any explanations you write. Now when we breathe air in, we're breathing it in because we want specific gases from the air. Now the air is made up of a number of different gases including nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, and methane and argon and lots of other gases as well. There's lots of different gases in there. Um, but the only ones we really want to work with in this is oxygen and carbon dioxide. We breathe in all the gases, but for gas exchange, the next process, only oxygen and carbon dioxide are transferred, okay? When we get and look at our lungs in more detail, we can see the lungs are made up of the alveoli, which are little tiny air sacs. Okay, these increase the surface area of our lungs, making you able to breathe in more, um, more air so this can work better and allowing for more exchange because they increase the surface area of our lungs. The alveoli have very thin walls to allow gases to travel through them uh, and have capillaries that cover the whole outside of each tiny sac. The capillaries also have very thin walls to allow the diffusion also. When we breathe in, we are breathing in that oxygenated air. If we looked in the capillaries, we would see from the body, we are getting deoxygenated blood coming into the alveoli. The oxygen in the air would travel through the walls of the alveoli and through the walls of the capillaries and travel into the bloodstream and would react with the haemoglobin in the blood uh, and they would form oxyhemoglobin and that could then be carried around the body. That deoxygenated blood we're bringing back carbon dioxide with it and that carbon dioxide would leave the blood at the same place, travel through the walls of the capillary, through the walls of the alveoli and travel out of the body when we breathe out and we exhale. This is the description you need to be able to give when it comes to gas exchange. The idea the air's coming in with oxygen in it the oxygen travels into the blood through the walls of the alveoli uh, and it's going to oxygenate the blood that's in there and any deoxygenated blood will be losing carbon dioxide which will be leaving the alveoli in, in the reverse way the oxygen is. Just to recap then, those different ways that the lungs are adapted to this are that the uh, alveoli have very thin walls to allow for a short diffusion pathway the capillaries also have short wall, uh, thin walls for the same reason. The alveoli in the lungs increase the surface area of the lungs to make them able to do this as much as possible. And also the alveoli are covered in capillaries to make them as good at this as possible. The final part of this is to look into how we can measure the volume of our lungs. And I've done a video of this uh, in my time in school this week uh, of me measuring the volume of my lungs. So you can watch this short video here. To you. To me. So if I want to measure the volume of my lungs, I'd need to set up something so I could breathe out and I could displace uh, water with the air I breathe out. So in this case, I've set up a measuring cylinder which I've filled with water. Uh, I'd prefer to have a bigger one of these because my lungs are probably going to be bigger than this measuring cylinder, but it does show exactly what it is I'm going to do. Uh, so I would set this up, I'd fill my tray with water, I'd fill my measuring cylinder with water, and I'd turn it upside down in the tray to make sure that the water's held in there uh, and this can work. I'd then note down somewhere how much water I start off with inside the container. I have 170 mil missing, so that means I can write down that I'm at 170 centimeters cubed currently. Uh, I'm going to note down later on how much is left when I've finished. So I'm going to blow into this, uh, place this under this, this end like that. I'm going to blow in to this end. end up with 750 is my number. So I've gone from 700 and 
from 170 centimeters cubed to 750 centimeters cubed. Uh, now that's going to be about 580 centimeters cubed of air that I've blown out there. And so that's the volume of the air that I just breathed out. If I was going to measure my full lung volume, I'd take a big deep breath and blow out as much as I can to try and displace as much water as possible. You can do this at home, but you need to make your own measuring cylinder. Uh, so you can use a jug, pouring 100 centimeters cubed at a time into a jug, pour it into like a two litre bottle of water, and with like a Sharpie or something, you can mark how much 100 centimeters cubed is on the side of a bottle as you go along. You can then use that to measure your lung volume, uh, and you can do that as many times as you want to. You just need something. You can turn your bottle upside down in to be able to make it work. I measured to start off with that I had 170 centimeters cubed or 770 milliliters inside uh, missing from the measuring cylinder. I then breathed out into the measuring cylinder, displacing some of the water until it went down to 750 milliliters. Uh, and I could then um, work out that I changed it by breathing out by a total of 580 milliliters. Uh, now, when it comes to water, um, one milliliter is the same as one centimeter cubed, so this gives us the volume of our air. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you stay safe, stay alert, stay curious, and subscribe.